hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and this is the fourth video in the crash course to my hair system tools I use. In this video I want to talk about some basic tools I use and how I set up my uh, my hair UI. I'm also going to talk about uh, some general styling 101 uh, tactics and how to actually make the hair look how you want it to through uh, fine work. This is a brand new scene file so I'm just going to create a uh, sphere scale it up and rotate it on the z-axis 90 degrees now I'm just going to apply hair to it so like I said previously it's in dynamic so you can push F5 hair and create hair now you got all the hair this is all default settings so nothing special going on now I'm just going to pop out this hair menu because I'm going to be looking at it quite a bit in addition I'm going to be opening up the uh, outliner to the left you can open up the hy hypergraph too that's fine I'm also going to open up the attribute editor on the right hand side. Um, as you can see this, uh, from the sphere, you can also see the three nodes, the hair system, the follicle group, and the PFX hair node that are, that are created. Now if I push play, I'm not, you're not going to see much because I don't have much of a playback, but you'll actually see it kind of works a little bit with the gravity. But it kind of resets every single time, so I've got to pump that up. I'm going to do like 5,000 or 50,000. Five thousand. You know what? F it. That's fine. So um, I have five thousand frames now. When I push play, it's going to flop because it's a dynamic. It's going to work with gravity. That's already built in, and it's going to hang out there. Now it's going to settle a little bit, so I'm not going to be able to do anything until I actually do something to it. Um, this comes to the display node, uh, display menu, which I'll actually explain everything here. There's three positions, current position, start position, and rest position. The current position is uh, the playback after Maya has already calculated dynamics. This takes in uh, effect all of the uh, effects and the solvers, gravity, all the uh, attributes that you want, and, how, and includes in addition to uh, the rendered node that you want. So if you push play, you notice that the timeline has moved up to 34. But if I move to uh, push any of these buttons, it's going to kind of disappear. In addition, if I zoom in a little bit and I push render, you'll notice that the hair is actually rendering out, kind of. Now if I go to the start position, I render, it's not going to render out. That's because of what these actually are. And if you look closely, since I'm in the start position, this is actually in blue, that means it's hidden. So if it's in the current position, it'll actually unhide, this will come out. Now, what the start position is, is kind of what it sounds like, the start position of the hair. When you push this, the PFX hair node actually hides, and you can actually select the individual hair curves. So what does that mean for us? Well, we can actually right-click, control vertex, and manipulate these. Since the hair itself is going to try to follow these as best as possible, from the start position, if you move this as I did right here, you add a sub object and go to current position, you will notice that the hair itself is actually following the curve. So this actually gives you an idea of how we are going to be manipulating the curve to make the hair look how we want it to. Now, now that we're in the current position, we want to push play. You'll notice that the hair does its own dynamic stuff, and after it stops, is what is known as the rest position or as after the simulation is done nothing else is going to happen like what do you want it to look like in the end but uh, this is kind of pseudo obsolete I don't really work with this too much I work with other uh, attributes so don't worry about that too much but as stated previously in the create hairs menu and one of the previous videos create rest curves there's rest, rest position now you know what it is so with that being said uh, now you know how to actually manipulate these curves to get the hair to uh, do what you want it to. But how do you make it so you, uh, let's say you want this to be your start position. So whenever you put the time slider to 1, you want it to start off here. So how do you do that? Well, there's a set start position uh, menu right here. And this is actually the second menu I pop out. So just pop that out right there. You can see if uh, the options right here are from current and from the rest. 
if you use the rest curves, you would actually you can actually use this, but I don't use this at all. I only really use the from current. So I select the follicles itself, the group right here. Uh, start uh, set start position from current. I'll make some calculations, and now this is going to be the start position for all the curves. So when I reset back to zero, you'll notice that the hairs didn't move back. In addition, if I go to start position from display, you'll notice the curves are all facing that as well. So let's talk about how to actually manipulate these curves. If you are in a start position, you can actually select these curves. And let's just do that real quick. Oops. Do, uh, turn off all the objects, curves. So now when I actually go to modify curves, this menu right here, I'll, uh, I'll uh, unlock it for you. There's a number of options. You can actually uh, manipulate the curves this way. You can straighten the curves, you can smooth the curves if you have jagged edges, curl the curves, bend the curves, and scale them all that jazz. This is a very touchy tool uh, because if you use dynamics, the tools are, uh, the curves are going to rotate and you want to cause uh, unexpected results. Um, so you want to get results that you're not really intended to. But since this is only general dynamics, if I push bend, you'll see everything's following every uh, following everything kind of in a nice orderly pattern. So uh, the problem comes to when you actually have dynamic and rotated uh, curves. So I'll just ro uh, rotate this real quick. I'll do the same thing. Select everything, curl, oops, I meant bend. You notice that everything except that one curve is bending where I want it to be. So it causes a major problem. But the cool thing about all that is undo that. You can actually, if you select CVs in the curve, you can actually uh, have these modifiers on these curves themselves. So you can have finer detail to actually get the hair to look how you want it to. But because I use dynamics, it's going to rotate the curve, so I really don't use this option too much unless it's the smooth. Uh, this actually comes to another uh, topic, which is constraints. If you look closely, you can see that some of the hairs are actually penetrating through the geometry. And if this is supposed to be a head, obviously that's not supposed to happen. So constraints actually helps prevent that. So I'll pop this out for you. Uh, the main constraints I'll be talking about is the transform constraint, the sphere, and the cube. The transform constraint uh, allows the selection to be manipulated by uh, an object, for instance. I'll select these curve points, do a transform constraint. So now, those, are, uh, those CVs that I selected will be following this constraint. Um, you're going to have Collide Sphere and Collide Cube. Sure, you can just go ahead and just click your hair, click on make, uh, your object make collide, but that will actually slow everything down because the uh, Collide Sphere and the Collide Cube, the algorithms are already in Maya. So it's going to perform a lot faster, it's going to save you a lot of memory, and if it's a major scene file, it's going to actually save you a lot of time and thus potentially a lot of money. So use these as best as possible, whereas Make Collide is going to try to uh, have everything calculated on the fly through your geometry. So with that being said, I'll actually uh, show you these two in an example. But I'm just going to create Sphere. So you want to uh, go to the hair system follicles because these are the objects that are going to be affected. Collide Sphere. Close that out. I'm just going to go to the front uh, and go to wireframe. You can see that a small sphere is created. So when I actually scale it up, I can do whatever I want, scale, rotate. The only thing I can't do because this is a predefined algorithm is I cannot define any of the, uh, any of the points. But as I have the uh, sphere actually where I kind of want it to be, it'll actually create uh, a constraint or something to collide with for the hair. So, I'm just going to put go to uh, current position because you can't see the dynamics unless you're in current position. Push play, you can see some of the hair flop out and shoot out of the scalp or the uh, the sphere because of that constraint. And that is how you make sure that the hair doesn't go through the head.